So as they were experimenting with um, electricity, scientists initially thought, well, they didn't really know what electricity was, and one of their thoughts was that they could dissolve it in water. And so they took a container, and they put a metal contact in, filled it with water, okay, and connected it to their static generator to see if they could, like, dissolve electricity in water. And then to see if there was any electricity there, they would touch this. And the early guys who did this knocked themselves on their ass. I mean, they got wet. There was a lot of electricity there, okay? Now, this is being done at the University of Leiden in, what, Belgium? Somewhere. Uh, and it took a little while for them to realize that, in fact, they weren't dissolving it in water. What was happening was the negative charge was going down here and repelling the negative charge from their body, leaving their body positive. Their body was the other half of the device. Now, that's a bad plan when your body is the apparatus. Okay, you really, the, the idea is to be the observer, okay, not to be the experiment. And so they said, well, you know, <clears throat> why don't I replace my hand with another conductor? Okay? And so they invented the thing that is today called the capacitor. And it, it stores electricity. And we've got a capacitor here that we've made. It's really high tech. Okay? It's two pieces of aluminum foil. <clears throat> we can put our Leyden jar here. And we have grounded the back piece of foil and we're going to hook this guy up here. So we now know that the top of the ball picks up a negative charge, okay? And that negative charge is going to repel negatives from the back. They're going to run down this wire and go to the planet Earth. So we're going to have a positive back and a negative front, okay? okay. starting to crinkle. And see, as it crinkles, what we're doing is pulling the foil in, and then every once in a while, yeah, there is a really nice thing. Like, and, and see, the, the thicker and louder that is, the less you want your hand anywhere near it. Okay? So we're, we're packing some electricity in there. So we'll let it... Okay. So it didn't discharge, so that's pretty nasty, so I'm not, I don't want my hand anywhere near it. So we're going to touch the back with this piece of metal and then come into the front. Okay, so there's electricity that stayed there after we turned that off. This is a storage device, and it's an important concept in electricity. It's the idea of the capacitor and it gets used in lots of areas. Today we can make capacitors by just taking this thing, instead of using this thick plastic, you use something very thin like saran wrap, and you roll this up into a ball and you've got a cylinder. Here is a one farad capacitor, okay? We've got three volts of D cells. This switch, the capacitor is hooked up here. If I swing this over to here, I'm going to run the three volts from the battery into this, okay? If I swing it here, whatever is in the capacitor will go to this motor, okay? Now, please notice that when I come down here now, nothing happens. The capacitor has no electric capabilities. So I'm going to charge the capacitor by running these three volts into the two input sides of the capacitor. Okay, so the electricity is going in. I'm getting a positive side and a negative side. Okay, I pull this out. And now, you know, you're going to say, well, I can fly and get a wire on there. This is a magic act. Okay, no, it isn't. Look at that. Nothing up my sleeve. We're removing all electric power. I'm even going to show you no batteries hiding anywhere. Okay, and so now we come here and inexplicably this baby runs. Now, it doesn't run for a terribly long amount of time, and it, notice it's doing something very significant. It's running down slowly. It doesn't just run and go, uh, done, okay? And, and that's an important behavior. 
So capacitors can be used to store things. Okay? They can also be used to kind of spread out energy. So we've got here a flash attachment. Okay? Now we want to get enough light that we can take a picture in a dark room of a lot of people. That would normally take a pretty big battery, which would be a drag to carry around with our camera. So, you know, let's just use two AA batteries. Well, two AA batteries do not make for a very bright flashlight. So how do we do that? Well, if you're up front, you can hear this. It's got a little whistle or a... Okay? So we turned on the flash. We can't take a picture quite yet because the flash is charging. When the flash charges, the little light is ready, which tells us we can take a picture. And you've done this. You know, you, you're ready to take the picture. Your friend has a weird look on their face. It's like, oh, that's terrible. They then smile, and that's the picture you want. You try to take it. You can't take it because the flash isn't ready. Why? Because the capacitor hasn't stored up that much energy yet. Okay? That's a huge amount of energy, and it takes time to load it into the capacitor. So the capacitor takes... 10 seconds worth of energy from the AA batteries and gives it to you in about a thousandth of a second. So where is that energy? It's in this capacitor. It's in there. There's a lot of energy. Okay? You can kind of tell. There's, there's a meter in this demonstration, and it is. Is he going to use his hand for that, or is he going to chicken out? Well, he's chickening out. Okay? He's going to use this brass squid. So let's see how much energy is in that capacitor. Ooh, yes, that would not have been a good thing. In fact, the difference between a flash attachment and a stun gun is only where you send the wire. Right? So now, you know, when you're writing your, your novel and the, the heroine is, you know, stuck in the room trying to figure out a way to overcome the bad guys, what she's going to do is disassemble her digital camera and turn her flash attachment into a stun gun, okay? And just run these wires out. Now, one of the ways you get to be the demonstration guy for 15 years is you remember that you've got to turn this thing off and discharge it before you put it away. Otherwise, you're only the demonstration guy for one semester because the next term when you reach up and get this, it gets you. Okay? And this is the thing that they warn you about in the back of a TV set. If you take the back off a TV set, they warn you that, you know, there's a shock hazard even if it's not plugged in. And that's because there are charged capacitors in there that may take a long time to discharge.